give you a high level overview of our group or what we do and, and the philosophy. Well, you shouldn't know well a little bit about me, why and what we're doing and what is our approach in uh, I try to be very quick, then we can if you have questions we can talk later on because I want to give the space to Alberto and Nick for the actual me. Um, so well you don't need to know a lot about me except that I in my career going back and forth from academia and industry a uh, bunch of interesting stuff prior to Pirelli I was at Tesla and now I'm here uh, Pirelli well most of the audience is Italian I think Nick knows us but you know the first fourth largest tire manufacturing uh, we have targeted the like premium segment who is not into car maybe into fashion and so you may know us for the calendar um, why and what we do in Pirelli, what about data science? Why we started data science group in Pirelli in the first place? So, well, besides the obvious like answer, you know, 125 years, some data collected in the manufacturing company, so capitalize on the amount of data that we had. Um, of course, try to use for switch a little bit of, you know, being a traditional manufacturer, we want to move into the service space. And data science was, you know, and data basically was the, to get to move into the space, but mostly was the initial brick, I would say, to drive a cultural change. You know, nowadays we call the digital transformation. I want to say just cultural change because it's way better and more, I think, uh, representative of what we're trying to do. Uh, and so, uh, Pirelli decided to start from that block to drive this to drive this change. Um, I joined the company two years ago and. Well, I'll give you a little more. Now we are about 20 people. I was by myself back in 2015. We work in many areas. You have three main clusters of activities here today. We're gonna, Albert is gonna talk a little bit more about the first one, as well manufacturing. Uh, but also we work on trying, you know, uh, to make our standard process more open, data driven, API driven, and, you know, build kind of, you know, hopefully algorithmic, uh, value chain across the company. We started for the demo forecast, which is one of the main uh, things that we're focusing. Also on the service side, you may have heard about this digital platform called Conesso, which is, you know, is a sensor tire that streams data through a central unit to your mobile phone, giving you the condition of temperature, pressure, but also computing tie wear, the start of wear of the tire. And we're launching in, in US in, in few months, and there's the whole the Part that you know has a, a lot of more data science involved and and uh, and a lot of uh, cool stuff happening on the service side. Um, just on the smart manufacturing, just a little bit of overview of our roadmap uh, because we started uh, well actually well back well 2017 should read also from you know 2015 on. We mostly focus on a lot of visual analytics because it was the easiest way to bring value to the factories. And so have the capability of people on the floor to see the start of a machine, do some prediction on how the process is going to be, what was the an easiest way to add value uh, to the process. And also, we, we spend a lot of time trying to build a data-driven culture across the company, but also in the factories, meaning tools and means to people that actually know the process, know, for instance, a production machine, to uh, interact with the data coming from the machine. So not turn everybody into data scientists, but at least build a culture in which you're used to interact with data, you know, at different level from the CEO to the guy in the factory. Then we start building uh, more and learning a little bit of predicting stuff where we are right now. Alberto is not going to talk much about that, but a little bit. We are now entering the realm of predictive maintenance. And our final vision is, you know, what we call virtual factory, which is not just, you know, accessing anything in the factory from anywhere, which is something, by the way, we, we already can do, but also, also have the sense of uh, a machine-to-machine, machine-to-human interaction to have auto-regulation of process and, you know, automatic alerting and correction of production. Uh, this is the high-level overview. I don't go much into detail. I better we show some particular use case in which we use Domino, then, you know, uh, Nick will explain. But if you have questions and uh, and you want to know more, just come see me afterwards. I just want to spend a few words on how they approach, because I think, besides the tech part that you're going to hear, I think it, part of the challenge 
when building a data science team, in particular in a 125 years old company, is how to approach it. You know, and you know, it's not. I mean, there have been attempts before. You know, our team started to use technology or deal with data or you know do some analytics or some predictive stuff. And what did we do differently? You know, respect to what was tried before. But first of all, you know, the three axes I want to very, very brief uh, touch with you is that how we approach people, process, and technology in creating our group. Uh, let's talk about people. Uh, first of all, we started outside the classic company grid. We were a small team, actually, I've been for a few months just by myself, and organized like a startup. You know, a little bit of the guy with the Mac on the corner, we don't know what they're doing, uh, but they're doing something. And so outside of a little bit of usual function, no reporting to IT or CFO, we had just one straight line to the CTO and basically license to kill, you know, do whatever, do something. And that, I think, was a good way to, to start. Um, the second, how do you, we decided, I wanted to attract talent. I wanted to build a core competence team rather than start working immediately with, you know, outsourced um, firms. And so the idea is to start, it was the hardest part. And probably, you know, if you're in the field, it's not easy to, to attract hire and retain talents, in particular in this space. In particular, it was even harder like two years ago. Uh, the idea is, again, build a very diverse group of people. Well, here's a picture of like last year where we're doing an offsite doing uh, canyoning. Uh, we've grown more of that group, but you can see John Mario there, some Alberto. <laughs> They're still alive after that. And, and our idea, you know, diversity in terms of backgrounds. I didn't want just computer scientists. I didn't want just physicists. We have like, linguistics, com people coming from biology and stats, computer engineer, computer science, uh, mathematical engineer. Diversity in background helps to do the, the job that we do. Also, keep, I kept the organization very, very flat and small, and as much, let's say, independent, try to be something that you can build a data product end to end. In fact, our team has grown from a core data science team up to have data engineers, then front-end developer, back-end developers, user experience design. So we are now growing like a small engineering factor in the company, and we enlarge our school, okay? Um, then uh, process, this is kind of very important. We, we started adopting agile methodology, not just because it was the cool thing to do, but, but the foundation of values which for me, transparency and trust was the way to work, not just with the team and is the way to work, but especially outside uh, in the relation to organization. So they, these are the pillars in which, even particularly for the job that we do, where you can really do things that fail by definition. You may try a model, you may try exploratory data analysis. You're not sure of the results. You need to be in an environment in which you really are safe to speak the truth and say, hey, we did this, it didn't work. You know, and if you're not there, you're gonna some sometimes down the road you're gonna have an issue. So for me that was really important. And trying to break, you know, the usual contract game between business and whatever service providers that are there, yo, these are the specs, you give me what I want. No, build teams that work together, cross-functional, and we're all together and make it work. Uh, and this is the only way, as I said before, in which you can deal with uncertainty that comes from the kind of work we do. Um, and also, again, expand across. You don't want to be your, you know, you move from the strange guy with the Mac to a team that is actually embedded in the business and more product focus and product center, customer center. Um, last thing, technology. Well, it's never the first part, uh, even though we have Nick talking about that. And it's never just about the tools at first. Um, for me, the most important stuff was using the right tool for the job. And uh, so, you know, I've seen people starting from building the platform infrastructure first and then trying to do data science. Uh, we can debate. I don't think that the approach that actually works. First, you know, you need to do understand what you want to do and see what you want to do, what is the best way to do it, and even start with what is available in a company. You, you can't wait to have the perfect data that never happens, or the perfect infrastructure, the perfect computational stack to do what you have to do. You have to do incremental uh, cycles and iterate even the technology you're using. Uh, and so choose the right tools at the right time. Uh, 
Uh, I think I'll stop here with one minute before the time. I suppose just introduce this. Speaking of tools, I had to tell you a story how we met and how we started to actually work together. Um, well, it was some years ago, let's not say the date, not, not, not that much, not a few, and I was doing a boot camp in San Francisco um, about data science, and Nick came to give a talk about the really embryo domino company that he was uh, funding. And he gave us such a demo to try, yeah, try, it was nice. And yeah, it passed. A few months later, I was starting working at Tesla, and one of the main issues we had, um, I was working in a, it's called the Product Excellence Group, and we were responsible to hold the whole anal analysis of data coming from the field, from the cars, from the sensors, and also, you know, from the product experience. So we were dealing with a lot of factory data, uh, field data, but also service data. And one important thing, especially for the uh, legislation in, in US, is if, if you say that a, a, a particular component has, is reliable, has a warranty, you have to produce and be able to reproduce the computation you did in order to either predict a failure or assess the reliability level of that component. So I started to build a system in which we should, you know, reproduce every single analysis as a data science team we did. And then I remember when I, had, I was talking, I had like four data scientists and we we're starting mostly doing like software development part. You know, we started, okay, then I need to do the stack, I used to version everything, and then I remember. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, so I need to uh, share my yes. screen through this. Let's see. I'm gonna. Okay. Yeah, we should be able to do that now. Yeah. Yeah. All right.